Hey there viewers and today we are going to be designing a blog index page for Validated Ideas which is a trending app on Product Hunt. We are going to be using Auto Layout in Figma and we are also going to learn how to solve a very painful problem when creating content especially for blogs, social media as well. So stick around and let's get into the video. And before we get into the video, my name is Roy, I'm a web designer. If you do find this content useful, please leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe, hit the bell. And I do highly encourage you to practice 30 minutes a day to one hour and you won't regret it. And let's get into the challenge. Okay, so we are starting the design and we are in Figma. This time I'm doing the canvas at a MacBook desktop and this is around 14, 40 pixels wide. So now we're gonna use um, a width of 1280 pixels and we're, we're relying, well not relying, but we're using a framework called Tailwind CSS. So a lot of beginners don't know what size to use or what width to use. Um, so this is gonna be very good in terms of if you intend to, if you intend to build out the design now you're getting real pixels um, and 1280 pixel wide is a typical one. Um, also in terms of figuring out the size of the image is also can be a problem. So I've used a plugin uh, which I'll put in the description which is aspect ratio and it will give the image a really nice um, wide 16 by 9 um, ratio as you can see there. What I'm doing now is I'm going to use auto layout uh, to create this hero blog item. Uh, so I'm just creating the heading and from there I'm just giving it a size of 40. I'm, I'm using the 8 point grid. So everything multiples of 8, try and stick with that. So I'm just going to create another item below that and this is going to be the, the paragraph which I then go to 18 pixels and well that's not in the 8 point grid but I'm just going a bit higher than 16 pixels and then what I intend to do now is I place it just underneath the main heading and I'm gonna create uh, auto layout for those two items so I select both and I do shift and A um, and now what's that what that will do is it will create auto, auto layout for both items and the benefit of that which is what you'll see very soon um, we are going to align it to go below or to stack that's probably a better way to say it so there we go we just hit the the down arrow and it will stack and now i'm putting a spacing of 16 between them uh, again that goes in the eight point grid and now i'm just figuring out how to make this fill the container so it's not stretching out uh, and what i'm doing here is sometimes i don't always remember this 100 percent, but it's just a matter of playing with what you have and here i'm just going down to 1280 pixels and from there i'm aligning it in the center i'm giving it a padding 32 pixels on the left and the right and here I'm just again I'm figuring out okay just let it fill container uh, and this will be very useful when you start using this for things like mobile design uh, and different screens you can just reduce the width and it will fill the container so at this point I'm still actually figuring out the um, why the heading and the paragraph is actually stretching out uh, and it's nothing to do with clipping the content it's actually to do with the text and it has to have a specific property which we'll get to in a minute um, but here again I'm just playing around so I go to fill container that's not working and I have to go within the text uh, which you'll see in a minute so yes, I'm clicking on the text item and from there I should go to fill container and there you go. It now fills the container and I do the same for the heading. So now it's nicely filling the container and it's not cropping out of that uh, auto layout. Uh, 
and here I'm just playing with the line height or the leading and with headings you can make it a bit tighter and uh, the paragraph you would make it uh, you be more generous so I went 150 percentage or 175 I'm just testing it out so now I'm just putting in the uh, the hero blog item which is very straightforward but once you've got this figured out you can then just copy it and you will make the remaining items below and it just saves a lot of time initially you're going to be um, using a lot, a lot of time to test out the auto layout but once you get the hang of it it is very powerful um, and it does remind me of flexbox if, if you're a developer and you use flexbox a lot this is exactly what auto layout is and there i just vertically aligned it and straight away you can imagine we have a component uh, blog item and you can just keep on reusing this um, and here I'm just testing out the auto layout space between I'm figuring out okay the nice thing here now I can put a padding on the top I can use 32 pixels which again is on the 8 point grid and now you can see things starting to line up nicely um, and yeah that was a pretty um, a very one of my favorite features in Figma is auto layout without a doubt probably maybe my top five <laughs> I'll have to reveal my five um, but now we are getting to the point where I'm creating the second uh, blog item and obviously this is not laying out correctly so again it's just trial and error uh, I wouldn't say I'm an expert in auto layout but I think once you start using it you can see the benefits of it it will save a lot of time especially if you're going to build out lots of blog pages or blog index pages and here what I'm doing I'm just getting free icons for sharing liking and leaving a comment um, on the uh, blog post so this is all on Substack which is what the site is built on or using so here I just created a second blog item I'm just reducing the width of the image uh, and, it, and it retains the aspect ratio which is really nice um, and then here again I'm using the Tailwind CSS to help me with whips and one of their whips is 768 but I decided to go to 1024 and then just put a padding of 32 pixels on the left and the right just to space it out and now I'm gonna do the tabs again I'm gonna use auto layout you can use the line which is a one pixel border to fill the container so it goes it fills that whole tab and then I felt oh maybe in the middle it, it looks pretty nice seems pretty balanced if I have it on the left it might be a bit a bit too heavy on the left so now we're arriving to this painful problem that that I've come across with startups or even my own stuff is when you have a blog or social media getting the right content to be consistent and this is one way which is illustrations is, is a really good way if this appeals to your audience and if you have a simple logo what I've done there I've just placed this in the back and you can already kind of vision or you can foresee you know there's so many ways you can utilize um, illustrations with your brand or with your logo in the background um, and this way if you plan to build out a lot of content you're going to have a consistent look because there's always a challenge of okay we need an image for this post we need an image for social media if you're getting them from different sources and if they're not consistent then the brand is not going to look consistent in different channels so this is a nice way to plan it out and just to see if the content you're gonna uh, use or post does it look consistent so here i'm just going back to gray and now I'm going back to my well, to one of my favorite things, which is mesh gradients. You can see there already it's quite it's quite strong, so it's helping with the brand. And I'm just placing the same gradient in the back, just positioning it differently, but it still looks consistent despite the different colors. I'm placing it now within the um, the, the logo. So there's just so many ways you can do this and it still feels consistent which is really nice um, so I'm just testing out again 
the nice thing about auto layout you just keep copying the items and it will just stack beneath and the spacing is already done because you put all the hard work in at the beginning and now I'm just changing up the background the position and it still looks consistent obviously it's got the same illustration so I'm thinking okay let me get a different one um, and see how it looks and sometimes it's good to not take you know, not to use the whole illustration so the more elements you have on illustration the more busy it can be if you can simplify it so for example there they got that massive screen in the back I think I eventually take that out now I'm just randomly positioning the the, uh, the logo various positions and it still looks consistent it's random um, which is nice you want to try and have the content different but at the same time it's still consistent so we reach the end of the video uh, I hope you do enjoy the content if you do find it useful again leave a like leave a comment subscribe hit the bell and I'll see you in the next video take care bye